There are some use cases where data transfer objects, also known as DTOs, can be extremely useful. But there are some things that you should keep an eye on to make sure that you provide the best developer experience. And those things are the ones that we'll see in this video. First, let's talk about what is a DTO, data transfer object. The idea of a DTO is that you will have an object that is responsible to hold all the data needed when the data needs to go across the network through a connection. So as an example, if you have two services that need to talk with each other and they need to send a message, that message will be a DTO. And it's from this minor detail that we can extract all the answers of a data transfer object. So in the day to day, when you need to move the data of an object from one system to another, you will need a data transfer object to make sure that you can quickly and easily serialize and deserialize the data on the other hand. The format where you are exchanging the data, if it's JSON or XML or YAML or whatever, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you have something that can easily be serialized and deserialized without impacting the object on both hands. And since this object is only focused on moving data from one system to another, that means that this object has no behaviors. So you are not supposed to find any method or logic inside of one of those objects. If we look into a simple class like this, we can find the difference between a regular class that can have behaviors and a data transfer object. Example. Here, we can find some details like some properties are being provided from the outside, like the title and the created on, and then we set them. And as you can see, there's no private setter as well, but there's this one, the ID, where the constructor is setting the ID to a new quid. If someone is imagining sending this data over the wire to other place, and this is the class that you have to serialize that data into, what will happen is that the end class will get a new ID. So this is a behavior that is implemented in this class. So it's not by the fact that you don't have a method that you don't have behavior. So any type of behavior that you have implemented there, either on setters, constructors, methods, makes that class not a DTO. So that means that if we want to transform this simple class into a data transfer object, the first thing that we would need to do is to remove this logic from here and get the ID from the constructor. Something as simple as this. Now I can safely serialize this class, take it to other system to serialize it, and I will have it without any change. So that means that now I can create the class like this. But there's something that you might notice is that we are not setting the due date. So the due date is a field that I can set. I, it has a public setter. So I can come here and I can set a date, but I can do exactly the same for other fields like the title. So this raises the question, should a DTO be mutable or not? Personally, I prefer to have immutable DTOs. Why? I like to capture on the DTO the data that is coming in, and I want to make sure that no one will change it till the end because I want that DTO to be the representation of the thing that I got. Why? Since usually a DTO will come from the outside, right? So you have system A, system A will call the system B, and for that he's sending an object with a given set of properties. I want to make sure that when B is handling that data, I have exactly the thing that I got into there. I don't want to take the risk that the data will change during the process somehow. I should capture the original thing. If I need to create an, a new version of that object, I might create a new object, but that will be explicit. So that's why, personally, what I believe is that we could improve the design of this class by removing the setter and initializing it in the constructor. So now I can't set the property. It needs to be done through the constructor. If you don't like the approach of using the constructor, and I understand why, this way we can make sure that the to-do item will be set but only once. So when we create the to-do item, we can do something like this. And if we want to change, for example, the title to something different, we can't. So this gives 
better experience to the developer that is using this data transfer object. And since we are talking about immutability, my favorite way nowadays to build a data transfer object is not by using this method of the init. What I would like to do is to use a record. So I will have something like the to-do item with all the properties. So now we can throw away this one, but also we need to revert this implementation because in the default implementation that is being generated by the record, we need to do it through the constructor. So you have several ways to build your data transfer object. You can use a class, you can use a record, you can use the init setter. So you make sure that you only set it once. It's a matter of preference, I believe. I like the convenience of a record. They, you quickly have an immutable object. They have a lot of things in place that will help you out. And that's the reason why I usually go into them. The other thing that I like on the record is that if you see something else besides the this definition, if you see that we go here and we start having things like private fields, for example, private boolean something, or we have a method here, it's a warning sign that eventually this is no longer a data transfer object. So while we keep the record to something as simple as this, you know that you will have the properties there, there's no logic and you can safely serialize and deserialize that object. The next thing that we need to consider is naming. This is not a good name for a DTO. Why? It's not explicit that this is a data transfer object. If I'm maintaining this software, I never touch this class, I might think that this is in fact a regular class that has no behavior. Maybe I can improve it by adding things here. I might consider to move some logic like this into the constructor once again. So that's why we usually add a suffix like DTO. But this doesn't mean that a class that is a DTO can only have a suffix DTO. There's several types of suffix that you know in your day-to-day -day that a DTO can have. For example, you can have the to do item create request or the create to do item command is a DTO as well. You might have something like to do item view model is also a DTO. If you are publishing a message to RabbitMQ, to Kafka, something like that, you might have something like this with the suffix message. So the idea here is you don't need to have the suffix DTO. You can have other types of suffixes because there's several types of objects that in fact are data transfer objects, but at least have the suffix DTO when you don't have something more meaningful like these ones, like having the request, or for example, for this case, you could have the response as well. So as you can see, most things that come from the boundaries of your application, like an HTTP request or a message that you are getting from somewhere, or the objects that you send back as a, a response, either through a message or through a, an HTTP response, they will be data transfer objects and it's better to use the names that apply to those cases. For example, if you are using MVC, you might go with the view model by using something like the request response. You might use the request response. If you are using CQRS, the commands, the query, all of those things are data transfer objects. And this informs the next important thing that you need to pay attention. That is, if you look into this code, it might be something that you have been thinking about why having the new quiz here or setting the date time offset now here. And I'm doing it because this is a data transfer object. But usually that data will come from somewhere. I might have some logic processing a request. And once I have that data being processed and generated, I will then map that data into a response object. So that means that for this case, imagine that this is about creating an, a to-do item Instead of having this to do item DTO, I can have something like this. I can have a create to do item request, and that request needs a title and a due date, for example. And my code to react to this request will generate the ID, will generate the assigned the created on, will save this thing somewhere, and then I need to respond. And when I'm generating the response, now I have that data and it's useful to give it back to our users. So 
I can have a response, and response will have all of that. And this leads to the next question. That is, often you will see people using something like the to-do item DTO, and then for create response and update response, get endpoint, they will always provide exactly the same DTO. But eventually you will start realizing that depending on the context, the object might be different. Let me give you an example. So eventually we might bring something like the update request. And on the response, we might decide to do something like, besides the created on, having a modified on. This might look silly because we could have a nullable property right here, but it's better to have multiple objects that are quite specific to the use case and provide a better and clear response to our consumers. So they know what they can expect. Other thing that in my experience often people do and eventually becomes a maintainability problem is by looking to this code, you can notice that there's a lot of things in common. So I could do something like having this class implementing this one. So now I don't need to have the same thing over and over again, same like inheritance, and then only extending it with that property. From my experience, for data transfer objects, it's easier to keep them separate, and eventually you might need to go to multiple classes to update them, but it's better to keep them apart than eventually adding a property to some place, and it will be available where it shouldn't be, and you might not even notice it. But that doesn't mean that you should use the data transfer objects everywhere. There's a trade-off involved. And you can watch this video right here, where I will explain you the good and the bad part of using data transfer objects.